science, you're careful, you're committed, and you've got a social conscience. In the uh, early 70s, some 70,000 hectares of land within the Sudbury area uh, was what we would call barren, or completely barren, very, very devoid of vegetation. Um, much of that uh, now has been improved either through our efforts or because of reduction in air pollution. Um, when we began our land restoration program, our emphasis was along the road corridors uh, and in neighborhoods where these barren areas were most visible. Uh, as we uh, continued to uh, restore uh, these areas, um, and to date some uh, 3,500 hectares have been restored, it's become more and more difficult to find or see uh, truly barren sites. Our program now is concentrating on uh, creating a biodiversity uh, within uh, the Sudbury area and supplementing um, these early successional plants uh, with a more diverse plant community, uh, one which is able to survive um, cycles of disease or fire um, and be more representative of what was here uh, initially. The mining operation didn't just damage the the rocky and the earthy part of the landscape, but it also damaged the lakes severely. There are many lakes around Sudbury and in the city, and we have 330 of them in the city, that were made so acidic that fish couldn't reproduce, that the process of fertilization of the eggs was, uh, and the survival of the small fish was just impossible in lakes that were, were as acid as they were here. For people who know the so-called pH scale, the acid scale, the pH of the lakes here was down to, in some cases, down to nearly four. And a good number for a, for a lake is, uh, is seven, for those of you who know the pH scale. Part of what also happened to the lakes is that that rain of tiny metal particles, which made such a, a devastated soil, such toxic soil, also rained down on the, on the lakes. And the particles settled to the, to the bottom and they became part of the sediment of the lakes. And what goes on in lakes is, is quite complicated. And, and let me just put my finger on one part which affected the metal. And that is when they, the lakes freeze over here in the winter, as they all do, um, for something like three or four months of the year, every lake around here has sometimes as much as three feet of ice on it. So the, the water of the lake is cut off from the, the air and it, it doesn't have as much oxygen in it. And when that happens, the metal that's in the, in the sediment that's rained down from the, from the smelter fumes begins to leak back into the water of the lakes, making the water very rich in, in metals. And that too really did a number on the fauna and the flora of lakes. So part of what we've been, we've been trying to do is to monitor very carefully the recovering water quality, the, the change from the old acid lakes to the now much more environmentally friendly and healthy lakes, and to see how fast that's happening, to make sure that it's happening. Because it's very much more difficult to go into a lake and do what we did to the, to the landscape. What we have to do in order to restore our lakes is actually to restore the land so that the water that runs into the lakes is, is healthier. So we, we're now finding that the lakes are recovering because of what we've done to the, the slopes of the lakes, the so-called watersheds of the lakes. And we've been able to, to, to see the return of fish, the return of the small organisms that fish eat. And you might say, how do they get back in the lakes? Well, you know, they come on birds' feet. And in some cases, the the eggs and the, um, uh, the seeds, if you like, the spores of organisms that once lived in the lakes are still buried in the mud. And as the conditions have changed, we now have organisms growing from um, seeds and spores uh, that, were, that were left there 50 and 60 years ago before the lakes became, became damaged. So it's almost like fossil life is, is, uh, is returning to the, um, to the lakes. It's a very interesting and quite complicated process. I think the uh, community as a whole has thoroughly embraced uh, what uh, we've done in the land restoration uh, activity. Um, there's a sense of pride that, uh, particularly from people that would have seen what the, the community was like in the 70s to where we've come 
uh, the tremendous journey of recovery that, that we've embarked on. Part of the change that was brought about in the community wasn't just the greening of the slopes, but also that people became involved. People like our now mayor and other prominent people too became involved in the revegetation, got their hands dirty and know what it's like to have to deal with an environmental problem. And when you can mobilize all parts of your community, your leaders as well as your school children, your scientists from the university, because they were the first folks that came here, you can mobilize a team that's as varied as that, you can really get things done. So Sudbury's story is not just of revegetating its hillsides by community work and changing the technology of the, the smelting and the mining industry, which was done by the corporations, but it's also getting the community to work together. I've been with the Land Reclamation Program now for a number of years and I really enjoy it and I wouldn't want to work anywhere else. It gives me a great sense of accomplishment that we have done something good for the environment, something that we can pass on to our children. Even today my children don't walk up to trees and hit them or break the, the branches off. They, they always say those are mummy's trees, don't hurt them because mummy spends a lot of time planting those trees for us. So it makes me feel very good and that I've accomplished a lot and it's something that we can pass on to our children, something good for the next generation. Sudbury is located in the uh, province of Ontario, Canada, in the uh, central part of the country. We're an hour's drive from Georgian Bay on Lake Huron, one of the Great Lakes, and approximately 240 miles north of the city of Toronto. We're located on the Canadian Shield. Canadian Shield, of course, is a rocky area with lots of lakes and uh, forests. While people can learn the history of the community through those attractions, the reclamation program has provided an environment for us now where people can then go out and paddle and hike and swim in fresh lakes. Our, our city has 330 lakes within its boundaries, so there's ample opportunity for great outdoor eco experiences here in the city. To help capture the uh, Sudbury land reclamation story for generations to come, the Vegetation Enhancement Technical Committee produced this book called Healing the Landscape celebrating Sudbury's reclamation story. And it uh, chronicles for people uh, for years to come uh, how the story began, how it unfolded, the successes that we've achieved. Uh, it shows many before and after shots of areas that have been reclaimed and are now uh, very, very nice green areas for people to enjoy. As we have just seen here in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, the nickel mining industry and the community can embrace an environmental stewardship that greens and restores the landscape. And for viewers who would like more information, please call or write. On behalf of our nonprofit organization, Educational Communications, I'm Nancy Perlman, wishing you a natural, unspoiled environment.